Guys, I have a confession to make. I don't know for you, but for me, I have missed Mohamed Kudus playing football for West Ham. And in today's video, we are going to do an update concerning him, Mohamed Kudus, and what is being said about him in the national team, I don't agree with. We're also going to talk about other players such as Tariq Lamte, Antoine Semenyo, Enes Miyama, Jordan Ayou, and also Abdul Fatah Shahaku. You are watching Sports Corner GH, and my name is Adam. If you have not subscribed to the channel yet, please make sure to subscribe. If you have already subscribed to, thank you very much and may God richly bless you. So guys, quickly, let's jump into it and let me begin with Mohamed Kudus, the star boy. You and I know Mohamed Kudus is currently serving a ban for five games. Three of those bans came from the straight red card he received when West Ham played against Tottenham. The extra two came from the English FA as a punishment for his conduct in that particular game. But the good news is that Mohamed Kudus is one game away from returning to regular action. Now, that one game is West Ham versus Arsenal. Mohamed Kudus is going to return for West Ham as they face off with Leicester City on the 3rd of December. And I can't wait. Now, the update we are getting from the camp of Mohamed Kudus at West Ham is that the player is positive. He is eager to return. In fact, he wants to make a statement with his performance when West Ham face off with Leicester City. So don't be surprised if you see Mohamed Kudus scoring goals, giving assists, performing beyond the wildest dream when West Ham face off with Leicester City. Trust me, he's going going to be a beast in that game. For Mohamed Kudusi, I don't know if this message would get to him, but we have not forgotten about him. Yes, he's not playing regular football, but then we keep him here and also keep him here. It is very important for the player. Now, moving away from that, let's talk about what is being said about Mohamed Kudus in the national team. So, there is a man called Ernest Thompson. He is a former management committee member of the Ghana Football Association. And he says some few things concerning Mohamed Kudus I do not agree with. Now, this is the statement. He says that when it's Kudus who was the captain, the players will play and play well. Then he said, when it's Jordan Ayu, there is a problem. Why would Jiku not come and play? And the next time you see him, he is playing. Please, this will be my take on this very brief. It's not like I'm supporting Mohamed Kudus or anything, but listen to this. The Black Stars, the national team has a serious problem. And these people who get the media, the TV, the radio station to sit and talk are the problem. Because with this statement, you are pinning one player against another player. You are pinning a fan base against another fan base. You are pinning a family against another family. Kudus captained the Black Stars during the AFCON qualifiers. Same for Jordan, he also captained the Black Stars for the AFCON qualifiers. At the end of the day, we did not win a single game. So how do you tell us that when Kudus was the captain, the players were playing well? If they were playing well, then they should have won the game. So, Mr. Ernest Thompson, excuse me to say, what you are saying is very stupid. And you shouldn't be saying this. I, 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 I'm pissed because instead of you addressing the real issue, the GFA president, the leaders, the ESCO members, the team owners, no one is addressing that. You are coming to blame players. You are coming to blame Mohamed Kudus that when he's the captain, the players play well under him. But when it's Jordan and you, they don't play well. We don't want to hear these things. We want you to address the issue and give us solutions. So please, with this statement, I feel like it's rubbish. Nobody should pay him to this statement. It's a fallacy and it's backwards from the truth. So guys, this is my own takes on this particular statement. So guys, let's move away from Mohamed Kudus and talk about other updates. And I want to talk about Tariq Lamte. Now, I'm buzzing with smiles because when it comes to Tariq Lamte, he is one player that has versatility. He plays very well. And anytime he's in the game for any team, both national, uh, the national team and also for club level, he gives his 100%. But for Brighton and Hove Albion this season, he has played only one game and has played three games for them in the EL4 Cup. So, in total this season, Tariq Lampe has played four games. Now, the reason why he hardly plays for Brighton and Hove Albion is because of Joel Veltman. Now, this player has taken over the position from Tariq Lampe. And now what we are hearing is that there are three clubs interested in signing Tariq Lampe. Now, these clubs are West Ham, 
Tottenham and also Everton. Now, in the general transfer window, all these three clubs want to see if they can, you know, persuade Tariq Lante to suicide from his current club, Brighton and Hove Albion, and play for them. Now, let me explain the Tottenham situation to you. Now, Tottenham, they are scared they could lose their star man, Pedro Polo, to Real Madrid. So, they just want to find a suitable replacement for the player and they have identified Tariq Lamte as that player. For West Ham, they also want the player just to bluster their squad and also for Everton, they have been a long time admirer of Tariq Lamte. So guys, these are the three clubs interested in Tariq Lamte who is not getting regular playing time at Brighton the whole Albion because Joel Veltman is doing a great job playing that right back position and that is the update i'll make sure to bring you more because these are just transfer rumors so once there is something precise and concrete i'll make sure to bring you that life here or sports corner gh now moving away from that let's talk about ns nyama hmm. when it comes to ns nyama most people would have mixed feelings with the performance he has given ever since he moved to leon now when he was moving from Nordland to leon most of us believe he was the next big thing but when he moved to Lyon, it did not play out exactly the way we wanted it to. The reason is that he went to Lyon at a bad time. He went to Lyon when they were having issues and problems. And currently, Lyon are having a financial issue. And this financial issue means that they have to do away with some players. And in that list is Enes Nyama. Now, there's a team in Turkey called Galatasaray interested in signing Enes Nyama and they are willing to make an offer of 10 million euros. And this is coming from a news outlet in Turkey called Sports. S-P-O-R-X. They are the ones announcing the saying that, see, Galatasaray is interested in signing Enes Nyama and they will be making a bid of 10 million euros in the January transfer window. But then, you see, we have seen this before. In the previous transfer window, Enes Nyama was supposed to sign for Fulham because Lyon were having financial issues and they wanted to do away with Enes Nyama. Only for the DJ, Enes Nyama only had to sign. No, only signing. He went missing and then when he was found, he was crying. He said he wanted to return back to Lyon and they sent him back to Lyon. Because of that, he did not sign for Fulham. Now, this same situation... People are asking, would he play when Galatasaray come in to sign the player? That is what people are asking because after you no, know, it was published, people went under the post and they were like, ah, isn't he the same player who was crying when he was going to Fuller? Would he be crying when he's going to Galatasaray? A lot of questions. But then we just have to wait for that moment to come. This is a transfer rumor. So far, Enes Nyama has played 10 games. 10 games for Lyon. It's not a, a regular this season, but then he's still doing well anytime he's giving those few minutes in games for Lyon. So, guys, this is the update concerning Ernest Nyama. His contract runs until 2028. So, he's a player that, I mean, Lyon really wants, but then due to their financial situation, they have to do away with him. Gala is interested and they are willing to pay. 10 million euros. Now, moving away from that, let's talk about some interesting updates concerning Jordan Ayu and also Abdel Fattah Ishahaku. Now, a few days ago, Leicester City coach Steve Cooper was sacked because of poor performances ever since they got promoted to the English Premier League. Now, what we are hearing is that Ruth Van Istroy is set to be appointed as the new coach for Leicester City. Now, you and I know Ruth Van Istroy and what he did with Manchester United, I mean, some few days ago. He took over as interim coach Four games, three wins, one draw. See, he was good. In, in fact, me as a Manchester United fan, I wanted Manchester United to keep Van Nistelrooy to the end of the season. But that didn't happen. They brought in Amorim. Yes. And now Ruth Van Nistelrooy had to leave. Only for some few weeks after Leicester City are interested in making him their head coach. And I'm, in, I'm happy for, you know, I'm happy for Jordan Ayu. I'm happy for Abdul Fattah Shahaku, who is currently injured. And I believe that this coach is going to bring out the best out of these two players as a Ghanaian and biased towards them. So definitely, I just want to see how they'll play under Ruud Van Nistelrooy. So guys, this is the update concerning Jordan Ayu and also Abdul Fattah Shahaku, who is currently injured. Let's talk about Antoine Semenyo, who is currently having four goals in the EPL with Bournemouth. In fact, I should say he's Bournemouth's key player this season. He's performing very well. He's even performing than he performed last season. And you all know that there are a lot of clubs in the EPL who are interested in signing the player. The likes of Tottenham, the likes of Arsenal. 
and Newcastle. Now, speaking of Newcastle, the reason why Newcastle really wants Antoine Semenyo is because they want to bluster their squad and also they want to use Antoine Semenyo as an auxiliary striker or a backup to Ishak, just in case Ishak gets injured. You know, you know Newcastle, I mean, they performed very well last season, but then this season, they are falling short here and there. They want to bluster their squad. And the only way Newcastle can sign Antoine Semenyo if Newcastle can sell players. So in the January transfer window, the only way is for Newcastle to sell some of their players. In fact, some of their key players, that is the only way they can finance the purchase of Antoine Semenyo. This is still on. So guys, these are some of the updates I have for you concerning Ghanaian and Black Star players. Let me know what you think about it down below in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and also turn on notification. My name is Adam. I'll make sure to see you in the next one. Charlie, we go vibe.